guys, Sean with Long Long Honeymoon here. I'm gonna start out this video with an embarrassing story. Who doesn't love a good embarrassing RV travel story? The story begins as we take our entire rig out on another cross country long, long honeymoon journey. We had the very smart idea of going on a little shakedown cruise to a local state park that was located only about an hour away from our home. And as we were approaching the park, we started to see signs of trouble aboard the Starship Enterprise. We don't really know what's going on here, but uh, our air conditioner, our truck, was working fine, and then it stopped working. Now we see warning light that our anti-lock braking system is malfunctioning. The truck was showing all the signs of dying batteries. And again, this is only after an hour of towing. And we pulled up to this park entrance gate and there was a ranger in one of the little ranger shacks and we wanted to check in to get a campsite, right? So out of courtesy, because our aging beloved Ford six liter Seymour is not the quietest truck on the market. I reluctantly turned off the engine just to shut off that diesel racket. Engineers, man your stations. Engine rooms report. Cycling station report. This will be an emergency restart of engines. The ranger just said, go choose a campsite and you can just come back and pay for it and we'll settle up then. So I said, okay, thank you, ranger. And I went to start the truck and guess what happened? It didn't start. We've got to risk a full power start. The engines were shut off, no time to regenerate. Do you hear me? We've got to risk a full power start. Our entire rig is basically stuck in the entrance to this state park. People are arriving behind us I'm looking around and, and the ranger's looking at me and she asked, is it gonna start? <laughs> and I said, I don't know, apparently not. You've got to hear me. We need a formula. We've got a risk implosion. And so fortunately we were on a downhill slope and I shifted the truck into neutral and we coasted our entire rig silently kind of down this little hill and around the corner. I popped the hood, broke out one of those lithium power packs and the battery charger that we carry around and I connected those. And sure enough, the truck started pretty quickly after doing that. But of course I was really worried. Our shakedown crews had already left us badly shaken. Our alternator was only three years old. Our batteries were only three years old. What was the problem? Well, we did a major solar installation this year that included four fantastic lithium iron phosphate batteries in our trailer that reside beneath our couch. We now have two umbilical cables that we use to connect our truck to our trailer. We have the traditional seven pin cable that will basically power turn signals and brake lights and so forth. And we have a new cable cable that we call the Anderson cable, which goes to a DC to DC charger inside the trailer. We have a 40 amp Renogy DC to DC charger that basically acts as a smart charger, an interface between our truck alternator and those lithium batteries. And in theory, it should safely pull 40 amps of power from our truck and feed them to those power hungry lithium batteries that reside beneath this very couch. I'm seeing on right now. So what was the problem? Well, let's start the obvious place, the alternator. This alternator is also around three years old. It was installed with the generous help of the chef at Dan's Clam Stand in Florida. <laughs> we were on a trip a few years ago to go to Disney World in the Florida Keys. Our original Ford factory alternator was giving up the ghost. It was failing and it was due for replacement. Unfortunately, the only alternator that we could source within close distance of Dan's Clam Stand <laughs> was this unit. We went into a local auto parts store. I said, I need an alternator for my truck. You know, what's the best one you got? They gave me this. I don't know where this thing came from originally. I suspect China. It came from China. Actually, I don't know where it came from. I can't find any markings on the unit. I believe it's a remanufactured unit 
and I believe it produces 110 amps. So 110 amps, you might think, why isn't that enough to send 40 amps over to your trailer? Well, we've got two power hungry batteries inside our truck Seymour. We're also powering more gear than we did in the old days. I mean, for example, we have a GPS unit. Uh, we have a really nice head unit. That, you know, we pulled out the old factory stereo and replaced it with a nice modern unit with a nice touch screen and all that good stuff. We're just pulling more power out of our alternator than we used to and this alternator was simply not up to the task of juicing those lithium batteries. I knew we needed a new alternator and so I had to kind of bring myself up to speed and I started looking around for alternator options that would be better and would solve this problem. And here's where I have to give a shout out to you guys, specifically Just for Kicks 29. Just for Kicks 29 told me that he replaced his alternator with a mech man alternator. I said, what is a Mechman alternator? And he said, well, it's really good. You should check them out. And so I went in and looked at Mechman and I discovered they have an alternator they call the Elite Series, which is a 370 amp alternator. It's a beast of an alternator. And again, I am not Mr. Alternator. This older alternator design is called a three phase. The newer alternator design that's more modern is a six phase. That's right, these alternators are three phases better, and you can crank them up all the way to 11. Mechman alternators are not only custom designed and hand built in the USA, each unit is dyno tested, and they include a card in the box with the results of that test. For example, ours output 210 amps at an 800 RPM idle speed, and 376 amps at the 1800 RPM cruise speed. One thing I like about the Mechman alternators, they are clearly stamped made in the USA, and they're made in Knoxville, Tennessee, which is the home of the University of Tennessee Volunteers, but we will not hold that against them. Apparently, Mechman is pretty big in marine and racing applications. They're just kind of getting into the off-grid scene and the RV scene. Unfortunately, when we got this alternator, we were nowhere near Dan's clam stand. So we found a great little shop that we know in Mesa, Arizona, to do the install. We did run into one issue with this installation. When we first took this alternator out of the box and put it into the empty space in Seymour, where this had once resided, there was a fitment issue where there is a bolted bracket, which is a coolant line, I believe, that was kind of blocking the way of the alternator. This fitment issue will only arise in certain specific years of Ford six liter trucks. And it's pretty easily resolved by either removing the blocking bracket or you can get fancy and use a grinder or a CNC mill to modify the alternator's aluminum housing. We chose the latter approach. So anyway, once we got the alternator installed, of course, I was super excited. We stepped outside, plugged up both of our umbilical cables, including the Anderson cable, and we came inside to check the readout. And of course, we go to our color display inside our trailer to check the status of all of our electrical systems. So we're idling the truck now. But uh, you can see here uh, by DC power, 522 watts are being pulled from our truck into our lithium batteries. So can you see that? Even though our batteries are reading at 100%, they're not probably at full float charge 100%. They're probably at 99.99% but we're pulling a little over 500 watts of electricity from our truck and with our 110 amp alternator this was just too much it was overpowering the alternator and the alternator was not recharging our truck batteries basically 40 amps translates to about 550 watts at this particular voltage i believe our new alternator was tested outputting more than 14 volts 14.6 volts and i'll 
was told that a standard Ford alternator will barely produce more than 13 volts. So, so far, our testing of the new alternator has been great. We did a multi-hour tow just yesterday, had no negative issues in the truck. There was no smoke coming from the dash. We did not lose air conditioning. And when we arrived at our camping destination, we had a 100% charge on our lithium batteries. So. This is a game changer for our solar setup and it was really turned out to be kind of a necessary part of the whole package because now whenever we are towing, we will be sending 550 watts if necessary to our lithium phosphate batteries. And so when we arrive at camping destinations, we're gonna arrive with a full battery bank. When you have a full bank of these four lithium phosphate batteries, you're pretty much set for a long period of time, especially if you're in a climate like in the American Southwest and you don't need air conditioning in the winter. Winter. So really excited about this new alternator. I think it's probably one of the most exciting upgrades we've made to our truck in a long time. It's very necessary and I know we're not only going to enjoy it, it's going to really enhance our entire solar package. If you have an older truck, you might just budget this into your solar budget. If you were going to do an install of the scope of what we did earlier this year, you may end up needing a new alternator, but then I feel like this is a massive upgrade for our aging but beloved Ford 6 liter Seymour. Sorry guys, that was a look at our thrilling alternator install. Until next time, appreciate you guys tuning in. If you like videos like this, be sure and subscribe to our channel. I'm Sean, this channel is Long Long Honeymoon, and here we say, Lolo Hugs.